right, welcome to the Unicon Open Source Support Open Aquila Briefing for Q4. For the agenda today, we're going to uh, cover some community news and talk about the sustaining engineering efforts. Uh, we will discuss the uh, 2018.2 release of Open Aquila. We have a community spotlight. Uh, we will then discuss some upcoming events and then we'll just open it up um, for, uh, for any questions that uh, participants might have. For presenters today, my name is Chris Beach. I am the Unicon Open Aquella Tech Lead um, and more generally I am a software developer at Unicon focusing on open source support software. With me today for our community spotlight we have Mary Glynn from Quinnipiac University. And they are an adopter of Aquella. She is the information analytics manager at Quinnipiac, and she is also one of the Aquella administrators. Uh, Quinnipiac has um, been with um, the Aquella application for about eight years, um, so longtime users. So for community news, I uh, wanted to cover some of the meetings um, that have been happening. Um, we have our Open Aquella Community Developer Meeting that anyone that has an interest in developing Open Aquella is welcome to attend. Uh, we also have the Open Aquella Advisory Board Meeting that is uh, selected from um, commercial service providers and adopters of Aquella uh, to try and um, bring together um, um, a set of folks that can help guide the Open Aquella um, effort. Um, the most recent community developer meeting, uh, we discussed the key features of 2019.1. Uh, the master list is, um, is being created in GitHub under an issue milestone. Um, and so it should be updated. Uh, it'll be updated kind of automatically. Um, you're all um, welcome to go out there and take a look at that and you can then see what's um, what's on the roadmap in the near future. Uh, some of the key features is more more porting of, from, of functionality from the admin console to the web UI, the security manager, search function, and then the selection session. As well as, uh, we talked about this at the last briefing, um, but really get the, um, the Blackboard LTI REST integration um, set up in um, by 2019.1. Uh, we also discussed that in order to uh, increase collaboration um, that we wanted to um, have the frequency of the meetings go from every other month to monthly. Um, so the first Friday of every month Australian time um, we will be having these community developer meetings if you um, are able to join and have an interest in developing the product. Other highlights in community news, um, out of the, um, the Edel Expo, which was um, the kind of the Australian Open Aquila Conference hosted by Edelax last year, um, the request was made to have a, a community repository provisioned. Um, back in the commercial days of Open Aquila, there was something similar. Um, and so this was, um, you know, it was voiced to have um, a similar kind of repository. Um, Edelax offered to host it, um, but it is truly a community repository. Anyone is welcome to contribute to it, and, and anyone is welcome to, um, to use it, right? Um, any content that is put in there um, becomes public domain content, uh, and we are encouraging folks to share your ideas and your best practices uh, with other adopters of Open Aquila, right? Um, so it can go anywhere from a really neat report that you ran or that you created and you wanted to, uh, to show off to a, an interesting way that you created a collection definition uh, to maybe a use case that um, you found unique that Open Aquila could be used for. Um, and so the link is here, and when we share the slides, you'll have the link as well. Um, but it's pretty simple. It's just community.edelxcloud.com. The other main highlight was the release of, um, of Open Aquella. Uh, the, you'll notice that it's, it looks different than usual. Um, so we've moved to a new release naming scheme, where it's the year and then the, the release number in that year. Um, it's, not, um, it's not all that different from other software out there, um, but it'll help create a little more uniform naming scheme. So 6.5 was the first open source release of Open Aquella, then there was 6.6, six, 
and then most recently there was 2018.2 and now we are looking towards 2019.1 and you can kind of view it as you know it'll come out in the first half of um, or the release branch will be uh, become stable the first half of 2019, hopefully by June. Um, there is a release guide out there um, on GitHub. So the link is in here. You can also go ahead and search for it in GitHub um, that will walk through the features. We're going to touch on those features today, but if you want a little more in-depth guide, um, it is available. And then the demo installer and upgrader is on the GitHub releases tab. And so again, uh, the um, as mentioned on previous um, briefings. The installer and upgrader that is um, that is on the GitHub site needed to not have Kaltura and not have Oracle um, drivers uh, bundled with that um, with that release. If you build it yourself you are you know it's it's completely legal to go ahead and bundle it yourself and then use it. Um, it's just due to licensing, we couldn't put that, um, the full uh, full suite of um, abilities, if you will, um, in Open Aquella onto the GitHub releases. The other main difference is that this demo installer or upgrader, um, it's um, when, you, when you use the admin console, you need what's known as a Java signing certificate in order to make sure that the Java applet, which is the admin console, is, um, has been appropriately created and is not going to harm your computer. Um, this demo installer and upgrader was um, built um, and signs the admin console with a self-signed certificate. Um, so while it's not a problem to use, you will get that warning. Um, and if you build it yourself, you have the option to go ahead and um, include a Java signing cert specific to your institution, and then you won't have to have that warning. For sustaining engineering in last quarter, uh, we talked about last briefing about that the Docker um, efforts were underway, um, and so we were able to solidify those. Um, the uh, we, we had an opportunity to create a theme, uh, a deeper theme for 6.5 um, that used uh, calling JavaScript from the language pack and ha hosting that JavaScript inside of another uh, Quella resource to really um, change kind of the look and feel of the old UI. Um, and we did this just to, um, to help... Um, you know, the, the old UI is, is kind of brittle at times, and this helped to soften the edges, even though really we're still looking towards the, the new UI with the Google material design as, um, as more of the end goal. Um, but this was kind of, uh, we wanted to put this in place because we were able to do that site-wide as um, um, instead of the new UI, which is coming in piece by piece. We also helped with some documentation, right? So making sure that adopters that are going to open Aquella's GitHub sites um, will be able to more easily use it and understand it. And then we did quite a bit of effort on, on what the path forward for the Blackboard integration um, should be. Um, there was discussions on um, taking the building block in the web service, which has um, which is the current way to integrate with Blackboard, but that's now um, that that integration breaks if you go to if you use Blackboard version 3400 or the SAS version of Blackboard. Um, so the building block and the web service no longer work in those environments, as well as the web services. The Blackboard is deprecating some web service features, um, and it's just you know you can see the writing on the wall. The Blackboard, the building block, and the web service is not really the way to go. It's not future proof. Um, Blackboard does make available LTI, uh, straight LTI, and then it has a, a fairly large REST API um, available. And so, what our um, what we've we've talked with, you know, the other um, the other folks that um, are familiar with the Blackboard integrations, and um, it's been decided that we're going to focus on building out the LTI and REST abilities, and then help folks with um, bringing in, you know, if there's um, you know, they've integrated in the past with Blackboard, so they have content in Blackboard. You know, we can write building blocks to, to migrate the content as needed, um, but really focus on going forward. Let's use LTI and REST the way that Blackboard has designed it 
so we um, so we can future proof this integration and we won't be stuck like we were a couple months ago where it it started to break um, and and it needed a kind of a complete redesign uh, that being said, there was a couple hurdles that we had to work through, um, as well as some other projects um, that, that Unicon was involved with. Um, so we didn't get as much sustaining engineering as we would have hoped um, in last quarter. However, those hours were rolled over into um, Q1 of 2019, so we are um, well positioned to implement this, um, this new um, integration using LTI and REST. We're going to focus on pull to LMS and pull push to LMS and our goal um, at the latest is to have that ready by 2019.1's release. So the exciting, uh, one of the exciting bits of news is that the 2018.2 release branch went stable. Um, so there are uh, several features here that we'll, we'll quickly walk through. Like I said, the feature guide uh, goes into more detail. And of course, you can go ahead and just download the demo um, installer or upgrader and see for yourself. Um, included in this release, there are view counts on the resource summary and the attachment. The way that you um, add OpenAquella resource attachments to um, to other resources have been streamlined. In the effort of taking the new UI from prototype phase to, um, to actually using it as the more mainstream way to access Aquella, um, the new UI theme editor has been put in place and we also now have a logo editor. Uh, there's been scripting API enhancements. A course selector um, has been um, enhanced for easier use. We can log HTTP refers, um, and then, like we said before, the Docker, um, the Docker functionality was increased. Uh, there is a note, um, it's in the features guide as well, but just so folks are aware, in um, OpenAquila 6.6, .6, this concept of search facets was introduced. Um, it, it allowed a, a more flexible way for administrators to say, you know, I want, I want a user to be able to search on a given um, metadata path. Um, and then OpenAquella did some, some, um, some working in the background to present that in a nice, um, clean manner. Um, because it was in prototype phase, um, those search facets were removed in 2018.2. Um, but we'll return in 2019.1 just reimagined, right, with the lessons learned. So if you have search facets that you created, uh, if you upgrade to 2018.2, they will be removed. Um, but hopefully folks are interested in the feature and it's, um, you can go ahead and recreate them in 2019.1. Um, and then the, um, hopefully the goal will be that they will not be removed again. So walking through each of those features just in a little more depth with having some screenshots um, to back it up. So for the summary view counts, um, you can see the, on the screen the, the one in the red circle. Um, near that you see the views 97. So on your summary page um, on the left hand, you can now see those views. It's automatically uh, generated. Um, and then if you go into the versions, you can also see the views per version of the item. Um, the, the attachments will also have the view count on them. Uh, for the streamlining the Open Aquila resource attachments, what we're looking at here is when you're in a contribution and you go in to, um, to add an Open Aquila resource as an attachment, you're presented with uh, essentially a selection session, um, which this is what this is. Um, and there was an extra step in here. You, you know, you did your search, you clicked on or you added a, an attachment and then you clicked return selections and then a dialogue came up saying, you know, are you sure you want to save this? Um, and that was that now you have the option to turn that off in the collection definition editor. So when you click return selections, it just goes back to your, um, your contribution wizard. You know, just trying to remove clicks for the user and make it that more attractive to them. For the theme and logo editor, uh, you need to enable the new UI through the settings page and then go and click on the button um, called edit settings that's under the, the new UI uh, dropdown. 
in the theme settings and understand this is the, the first pass. Um, and as folks are looking at this and saying, well, how is this gonna work with my institution? Um, we welcome um, you know, your, your insights and your thoughts on, you know, this is gonna work really well for me or uh, my institution, or this is really hard, or it would be nice to have this other um, ability to adjust the theme. Um, so we can, we can really start to hit the ground running as folks are upgrading to newer versions of Open Aquella and, and wanting to use the new UI. Right, so there's, there's six, um, six colors that you can go ahead and change. Most of them, well actually seven, sorry. Uh, most of them are self-explanatory. Others, like the secondary color, um, really just kind of need to experience to see, see what that affects. Um, but if you download the demo upgrader, you'll be able to see it pretty straightforward and kind of play with it. Um, every button there are all the colors underneath the, the descriptions and the color scheme um, is a, you know, a full RGB um, color selector. Um, so you really have the ability to, to totally change how Aquella's coloring scheme is set up now. Um, and now you also have the ability to, in a very simple way, change the logo that's on your site. Okay, so you just upload a PNG file, the recommended pixels are there, um, and you're, you're up and running very quickly now. So this is, a, this is quite a step up. Now granted some things were lost um, in this, but this is a huge step up from the old way that you had to theme Open Aquella. Um, we can't, we can't kind of hack together a theme, this concept of a deep theme where you're pulling in JavaScript resources, um, like I mentioned that we open sourced, that, that doesn't really work here, um, but it was, it was, um, it was decided that it was, it was better to remove that use case um, in order to enable this use case um, going forward. As the new UI is being created, everything is, every interaction with Open Aquella is being turned into a REST API call. So if users are like, well, this theme editor and you know, the new UI using Google Material Design does not work for my school doesn't work for my institution and I want something different, uh, you don't have to redesign Open Aquella. You can then use the REST APIs to build a, a UI that suits you, um, you know, a different presentation layer, but the power of Open Aquella, the flexibility um, can still be there for you. For scripting API enhancements, says so the scripting API is used in various, um, areas of Open Aquella. Uh, one of the, the prominent ones is when you save a, a resource or an item, uh, something known as an expert save script is ran. Um, and in there, it's, it's a JavaScript syntax that has access to backing um, Java objects that you're able to really reach into Open Aquella and, and set up some pretty custom um, functionality. Some of those um, scripting APIs, uh, when we're working with, our, with the XML script type, right, so that your metadata, uh, you're now able to essentially walk the tree, right? You can be at a, um, an XML script type node and you can say, get the parent, right? You can also say, give me all the children. And then we added a, um, just a little helper function to get the name. So you can start to, um, you can traverse now the tree in a, in a lot easier manner than you were before. Along with that, um, in the control script object, so every, every widget that you see in the, um, um, in the contribution wizard, so like an edit box or a radio button is a control script object. These control strip, script objects, um, when they are embedded in repeaters or groups, uh, sometimes you want to understand through scripting, you want to understand what the, what the widget or control right above you in the same repeater um, what's it value? What's the value of it? Um, and with the, um, without this enhancement, it was difficult to kind of impossible to do um, in, in certain cases. And so this was enhanced to allow us to um, get the parent of the control that we are on, right? And then also be able to get the index. So the control will know um, where its place in the repeater or the group is. And then um, kind of um, in more of an admin side of the scripting API, um, the scripting API Javadoc can now be built locally. 
Um, so if you are adding your own or for some reason you want to build it yourself, um, you can just run SBT, write scripting Java doc, and it will output a local copy for you. Uh, you can also access it from the, um, the releases tab. Um, so each release is going to have the, the scripting Java doc available that's you know, the, the latest updated. Yeah. And then some of the honorable mentions, not necessarily screenshots here, uh, but the course selector is now, um, it's a widget that is um, that was made searchable and scrollable. Um, generally use courses when you're working with um, a CLA and CAL um, copyrights. Um, and so one of the example uses, if you want to go and actually see one of these things in action, is if you were working to um, activate item attachments, you'd be able to then see this course selector um, in action. HTTP refers, and uh, they are now all being logged in the meta column in the audit log entry table. Um, this meta column is JavaScript notation, um, so it allows flexibility to add more, um, more data as we go along instead of you know, adding a new column or whatnot to the audit log entry table. Um, but it now tracks HTTP refer, which is especially useful for when you're looking at LMS integrations. Uh, so you have that, um, we talked about the, the item and attachment view count, and you pull those values from the audit log entry table. Uh, previously, it was, it was kind of hard to say um, what, what LMS did, um, did the viewing, right? What user from what LMS did the viewing? Um, and now that you have the HTTP refer, if things are set up correctly, you'll be able to say, well, it came from, you know, this Blackboard um, URL and, you know, it was this user. And for Docker, there's there's two docker enhancements um, it was originally you had the ability to use docker to um, to create a runtime environment it wasn't necessarily production worthy um, and it was for a very specific use case but still it was helpful um, now you can um, there's a docker file out there that you can build production worthy installers and upgraders uh, you provide this docker image your um, your, your institution's Java signing cert, and you know you do a couple commands, and it outputs an installer and an upgrader. You never have to install SBT um, or any of the other build dependencies. You just use Docker. And then the other Docker file um, that was existing for that runtime environment, it was enhanced to allow um, uh, more flexibility, more general use cases. Um, and while it could be used for production, it hasn't been vetted in that way yet. Um, so if, if the community wants to do that or if there's a need to do that, um, you know, we welcome it. Um, there's nothing that's precluding using this Docker image from running in production. It's just a matter of due diligence at this point. So looking ahead to Q1, uh, so we had the, the feature list that's out on GitHub, and that is, right now, um, the, the only developers on Open Aquella are coming from Edelax and Unicon, which is fine for now. We would love to see the community get involved as developers as well. Um, for Unicon specifically, we are, we are focused on rebuilding this Blackboard integration, so it is way more future-proof, um, ending the building block and web service, um, and helping folks get to, get to that level. Um, it was mentioned on the webinar uh, with BYUI that BYUI is considering open sourcing uh, their tool called Aquella Sync. So um, as, as those hurdles are unblocked, then um, we have it on our radar to um, help with the open sourcing of Aquella Sync so it can be used as, um, with the wider community. And then as always, there's a priority backlog that our open source support clients help to drive what the priority is. Um, just based on, on how open source support works, it's not necessarily a project, but if you're an open source support client and you have an issue with Open Aquella, let us know. Um, and let us know if it's really bugging you, um, really difficult for your institution, and we can then up the priority um, and, and help that get into Open Aquella. And then with the time that we have left, um, we are 
uh, we are excited to continue to help sunset the admin console, build out the REST APIs, and help with the Google material design UI. So this, this new UI, we saw the theme editor um, earlier in the presentation, um, that that can be site-wide, and, um, and we can start taking advantage of more of a responsive uh, look and feel for Open Aquella. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to our community spotlight. Uh, Mary Glynn is going to discuss um, Open Aquella and faculty activities at Quinnipiac. So thank you very much, Chris. I appreciate that. Um, I'm sitting in here in our conference room along with Kim Palencia, and we have some other folks in another conference room joining our, um, our webinar. So happy to have them with us. So wanted to go ahead. I think I can move to the next screen, which I just did. So thank you. I think I have controls. So the agenda, um, pretty much uh, we wanted to introduce our team, the people that we work with that help Aquella um, up and running, get Aquella up and running and, and be a vital resource here. Um, we also want to discuss specifically an Aquella use case um, and the collections involved with it, and then some, um, just to kind of go through what the process was and roles in defining this particular collection or collections, and then some of our ideas for next steps with it. So it's been an ongoing collection and, and wanted to share that with you. Um, our team consists of uh, Kim Palencia, as I mentioned, she and I work closely on the, from the Aquila side of things. Um, we also have the academic technology folks highly involved with helping us um, work out these collections, whether it's, it's bringing the collections to, to light or whether it's actually um, working with faculty and um, administrators on how to um, work with Aquila and, and use it effectively and documentation and, and all that good stuff. We have our STP team that we work with. We have um, a series of uh, deans, administrative support li librarians, and, and our web folks. So, so it really is a comprehensive team to get things out, out the door. Um, so with that said, I guess we can go on to our next slide, which um, I think I, there we, are, there we go. So the collection that we're concentrating on, our collections, is um, answering our questions of where's your institutional data stored? And, um, and basically your institutional data could be all over the place. It, can, it could be the, out there on the cloud, it could be on someone's desktop, it could be in your legacy ERP system, it could be um, pretty much anywhere stored. And what we wanted to do was to actually enter the data once. Our, our concept is to, to kind of collect data and we're concentrating more on our faculty data in this particular collection to collect that faculty data, store it once, and we use it elsewhere. So, so it's, it's a combination of, of data, which we have over to the far left that you can see on the slide. Um, and if you look, the first three, the demographics, degrees, and course information, that's stored in our ERP system. So we don't want to collect it in Aquella. Um, we want to reuse it from our ERP system. Um, we may have your CVs and your intellectual contributions and, and other types of data out there on the web or, or wherever, but what we wanted to do was pull that data in so that maybe we could um, accommodate an accreditation report to count up how many intellectual contributions we have here within a school. So those are some of the things that we try to um, tackle when we, when we went about setting up um, the, the faculty collection. And we call it faculty activities overall. Um, Going to the next slide. And what we wanted to, um, again, keep in mind is collect once we use often, where we can support our accreditation reports, we can um, submit your faculty activities as part of the faculty review. You can um, take your faculty activities and blast them out to the public web 
um, in the in the public web format. So there would be a transition there. Um, you're also your we have on a yearly basis your faculty development plan, how you can reuse that data, and just in general your faculty collaboration, whether you share what it is that you're working on so that you can find an expert or you can find a publication that you're looking for and connect with your, your faculty members. So in order to create this, we divided it into two different collections with the concept of we had to work with Aquella and, and took the best of and, and the features that it, that it provides. And there were two different types of data. One would be the data that would be the demographic data um, where you can see to the left. And that's pretty much overall over a period of time. And then your annual activities, which might include your intellectual contributions or publications, your professional development, and so on, that that would be on an annual basis. And so we thought that that concept worked well because your intellectual contributions alone on a yearly basis could, or even your service alone, could go well beyond what Aquella can handle in, in a one resource type item. So we'll explain a little bit further, but, but bottom line, there are two collections that look like one. And so we've done some tricks to, to make it look like one, but that's our concept behind the scenes so that your demographics is there and always there, but um, your annual activities, we have processes within our group, our Aquella group, where we know we have to pull in for the next year, make it available, your, your next year's um, resource. So to get into the actual collection, so we have just a couple of screenshots and I hope that you can see them. As we mentioned before, the faculty demographics uh, in our existing ERP system, we have the, the, the faculty's name, title, department, degrees, and you know, it's important that we use that data because we could theoretically allow Aquila to collect the degree information. But the good part about this is that we know that the degrees have been vetted by the provost office. We know that they're validated, so we can rely on that data, and that's the system of record. Where we go into the, the actual collection for um, within Aquila, we're collecting your professional experience, designations, your areas of expertise, social media, and a biography for the public website. And we even um, just recently added a CV upload to allow faculty um, to pull in that data. And then again, a lot of the, the demographic data is what we pull over to the public website um, to make available. So if you go to the right on the screen, you can see that we have Jane Doe. Um, we always have a Jane Doe record so that we can see in actuality what it's going to look like within Aquella and, and kind of test with it. So that gives us, and, and for documentation purposes. So we always have a Jane Doe. And you can see that this is truly an Aquella and we've streamlined and, and changed the data display within Aquella to make it more condensed and easy to read and, and um, view. We've tried to use different, um, when appropriate, we can pull in different images like the queue that you can see um, right here. I don't think my pointer is working, but the queue little icon tells the user that that will, and it's in the documentation, that that will be presented out there on the, the public website so that they're well aware of it. Um, so that's, that's the resource display within Aquella. And within Aquella, when you go into edit, you can see the little square box that, that lists out the different screens um, so that they, the annual faculty activities is just general information about the faculty member that's preceded. And so that's what joins it all together. We do have a user ID um, that relates all the faculty activities together. So that's how we can pull it all together under one umbrella. And then we have the different pages where you collect your different information. So of course, when you go into 
academic experience. It will ask you for a location. It will ask you for an institution. It will ask you for dates and so on. And it's using the Aquella um, fields to pull in that data. So we went through to identify all that information and, and pull it um, for faculty. So that's the demographics collection. Um, and then the second collection that we have is the faculty activities, which is, the, uh, is collected on an annual basis by year. And one of the things when I say by year, I use it loosely because in a couple of scenarios we're using it by calendar year and other scenarios we're using it by academic year. Um, so we um, allow faculty to enter in their intellectual contributions or publications, their professional development grants, awards, honors, and service. And you can see in the middle of the screen, um, again, we have Jane Doe. And in order to present the data that we're collecting, we have many publications or, or service items or honors and awards or even professional development. You can see that there's a blue tab that, that's highlighted, which is publications. So the nice part about this, it just shows you your publications. When you click on service, you can again see only service. Um, so that's a, a good way to display the data. Even the view profile and academic history, when you click on that link, we have it going off to our um, ERP system that pulls the faculty profile um, academic history so that you can see the, the courses that they taught. So we're not storing those courses in Aquella, but we at least have a link out to where the system of records storing them and we can display them through the web. Um, again, we have the different pages and um, with publication service and honors. It just so happens that this collection is not including professional development, but we have other schools that do include that. And then over to the right is the publications or intellectual contributions where it gets pretty um, involved where we've had to sit with faculty, librarians, deans, whomever, to get that list comprehensive enough to cover what intellectual contributions they may have. And then, as you might imagine, you click on a contribution and then you have different fields that pop up because it's a certain type of, of contribution, whether it's a peer review journal or um, a conference that you've presented at. So um, we've spent a good amount of effort in, in those areas and time for sure, and continue. <laughs> um, so on to uh, just more specifically, Within Aquella, and, and I guess what we can say is that Aquella has been so extensible and so um, flexible in so many ways that when we've bumped into some problems, we've been able to program our way around it in, in different ways. So for this particular, a fair amount, a good amount of effort was put into the displays when you go in and you search for a resource and you click on the resource itself, you can see that it's a nice customized way. One of the things is the top one where you can see demo 2018 all the years across. And what you can do is you can click on each year and it will automatically jump you to that resource. So those are all the years in the demo are different resources within. So it kind of combines all your resources together so you can have your navigation all under one screen. So that was a combination of, of just using the um, Utils Search Advanced and some code behind it. For the tabs, um, when you click on one tab and you see publications, you click on the service tab, that was a combination of CSS and HTML. And again, under the um, resource summary display. So just a, a few ways that you can make modifications, just even for the look and feel to pull it together and make it more intuitive and to help with your navigation. Just a little bit about the collection definition. Basically, um, the school of business was the first to adopt and their goal was to 100% eliminate the paper binders and generate accreditation reports. And um, what we were able to do, if you, if you go into their conference room now, 
way back in the day, they used to have binders all around in the conference room. Now they have trophies with lights in the, built into the, the, ca at the cabinetry. And um, so they've eliminated their paper binders and they're able to pull out of the system um, the data that they, that they need for accreditation and, and other types of reports. Um, so one of the biggest pieces to it, and, and which is really important, is that the, the people behind it and that backed it were the dean and the, the associate dean. So it's really that administrative um, or administrator's support that really made everything happen. Um, so pretty much working through them, we were able to um, define fields, repeaters, so use all the Quella features where you can um, have drop downs, conditional fields, and so on, to help with the, the collecting the data to make sure it's in the format so that you can report back out, out from it. The other thing is, is that uh, we were able to generate many different kinds of reports, and it was a combination of using SQL creatively. So there's a lot of creative SQL behind the scenes using the BERT report writer. So we were able to um, pull data in, not only from our Aquila resources, but also from our authoritative or, or system of records type data. So that combination was, was helpful. So for example, if for faculty CV, we were able to pull their photos from another source, or we were able to pull their degree information because you want to have degree information. We're not collecting it in Aquila, but we are collecting it elsewhere. So that combination really extended the use of uh, and um, usability of the system. Um, the initial data entry was by students and reviewed by administrators. And since then, we've, we've come up with a little bit better of a model where the, the deans supply administrative support and so that they could be entered in directly by someone within that area um, that's more familiar with those types of uh, of data. So that's pretty much how the collection definition was created and it's been worked on and updated and, and perfected over a good amount of time. Um, as I mentioned that the, the dean administrative support and faculty are key. The dean um, really helps with faculty communications, getting everyone on board, getting everyone on the same pace Page also the concept of enter once and reuse often, um, that that's an important model so that you can kind of sell to your faculty that you enter it in once. It's, yeah, it's a lot of pain, but you can reuse it in many different forms. The, bot, the, the thing that helps with the pain is that the administrative support would backfill. So if you had a big long resume, you would be able to have your administrative support actually fill in on a yearly basis all their activities. And then at that point, faculty could take over and then on a yearly basis, they can go in and update and, and um, make changes as needed. So that, that model has pretty much um, worked and been pretty successful. The other part to it is that we definitely need the Aquila administrative support, STP, and the academic technology support to work closely with everyone to make sure we're all on the same page, open lines of communication, documentation to make sure things are pretty explicit and um, in supporting faculty as needed. So the concept of collect once, reuse often uh, is really what drives it um, in our minds because what it does is it, we're able to collect it in Aquila and reuse it, even if we have an offshoot of a, um, another collection, which may be your, the faculty development work plan, we can take the data that's already entered into faculty activities and bring it into the work plan, maybe on a yearly basis as appropriate. And so that, that gives us the full flexibility, whereas if it were out there in the cloud, there's no way that you can pull it in and, and work with it. Here we have it and we can push it out to where we want or pull it into other Quella um, collections. 
and it's mission critical for counting and quantifying for our accreditation um, and resubmitting for other kinds of processes that are that are needed here at the university. And again, it's because of the BERT reporting that we're able to do that. One of the things that I didn't mention, even in the BERT report, is you could even have a link pointing to your attachments within the BERT report so that you have that report. People have permissions, they can just click on that link and go right to that attachment. So you can get people to where they need to go in a, in a nice, efficient way, either through BERT or the display on your Aquila screen. Um, the other thing that we also like is that we can move the data out. So we're working with our web folks to get data from Aquila and pass it through so that on the public website in a totally different look and feel. It's basically your website field. You can, they're taking that raw data and they can mimic the, your, your website and, and produce it out there. And then overall just collaboration where you can search and, and share your collections. And we need to get better in that area, but, but it's definitely a, a good potential um, because Aquella is pretty much based on that. And the other thing that we use extensively, I think, is the permissioning and security has just really, I think that that's what's made it so flexible, where we, have, we can have screens that have faculty input, but then you can have a dean, a associate dean, or whomever, they can go in and fill in their own fields and get a nice report out of it to say that they verified it or, or they're on board with it or whatever. So we've done a lot with permissioning, either on the screen level or collection level, um, many, many different levels, which has given us many options. Um, next steps, we need to roll out um, the collections to additional schools. Um, you know, we'll continue to streamline, add in new features as they're available, or different drop-downs or different, um, different ways to collect data. Um, automate our data exports to help with, say, the web or, or whatever it is that we need to do, and then we need to improve on our sharing and um, data collections. So, um, so that pretty much brings us to where we were heading, and, and hopefully that gives you an idea of what we're doing here at Quinnipiac with our faculty data. So thank you, Chris. All right, thank you, Mary. Very interesting to hear how Aquila can be used as not just a learning object repository, but you can you can take it, you can customize it, and you can um, you can make it fit your business needs. So I appreciate you taking the time to uh, to put that together and, and join us today. Uh, for upcoming events, we have the next Unicon Open Source Support Briefing, um, which will cover Q1 of this year. There'll be another web call, and that will be on April 11th. Open Aperio 2019. Um, this will be the second time Open Aquella is discussed and uh, presented at Open Aperio. We had um, we had uh, BYUI had a presence there last year as a presenter. Um, thoroughly enjoyed Matt's presentations, um, and I hope to see other Open Aquella adopters there um, this year. Um, this year, it's going to be hosted in Los Angeles, California, and it'll be June 2nd through the 6th. Um, if you are looking to present, the deadline is coming up soon to um, get in abstracts, um, but also if you want to come and, um, and just learn about other open source um, products um, through the Operio Foundation, um, products might not be the right word, but applications, um, or if you want to you know, join fellow adopters of Open Aquella and we can get together some working groups um, and talk about things that interest us with the application. Um, and then the other upcoming event that we wanted to highlight was EDUCAUSE. Um, it will be toward the mid of October and that will be in Chicago. So with that, just a, a reminder, the community contacts out there, um, this, this community is still somewhat young, right? It's um, Open Aquila was open source still somewhat recently. Um, and so we encourage folks to get involved. Um, there's the Open Aquila website. We have the Google Groups, which is, um, it's the Google Groups and the GitHub issues that seem to be the most active at this point. Um, and so we'll see how that evolves as we, as we continue to grow as a community. Uh, there is a Slack channel out there. 
um, uh, Twitter handle if you want to go ahead and keep up to date on all things Aquella. And then as we mentioned, uh, the Community Artifacts is now um, becoming a kind of a mainstay of, of the way that we get involved as a community with each other um, and be able to share um, resources and artifacts um, to, help, to help other adopters. And with that, we'll go ahead and open it up for any questions for Mary or myself. All right, hearing no other questions, and if you do, feel free to reach out um, to, the, to the Google group. Um, and, you know, uh, we're watching that. I know Edelax is watching that, um, as well as, as other folks in the community. These slides will be shared along with the recording um, once the, the processing happens uh, behind the scenes, um, and it will be coming out in a blog post on Unicon's site. So appreciate folks joining, and we'll talk to you next time.